Today we welcome a special guest. It's Snoopy! Hi everyone, it's Jen. Welcome back to my channel. I am here with a very overdue wrap up, so I thought, because I waffle so much, I'm just gonna pick the cream of the crop from January, February and March. So I don't wanna talk about the bad books because we just want good stuff right now. Maybe I'll rant to you about Lady Chatty's Lover one day and how much that book upset me, but we'll, we'll leave that for some other time. So in absolutely no particular order, I'm gonna start with the books that I listen to on audio. So the first book was The Green Road by Anne Enright, which I read for the Irish Readathon in March. And this was my favorite Irish book that I read all month. I read Actress first by Anne Enright, and that was the first book I ever read by her. I didn't really click with it, but The Green Road is a really brilliant family story. It's about the Madigan family, and Rosaline is the mother, and she has four children. So the first half of the book, each child has a chapter, and it starts in like 1980 and goes up to 2005, and the last part uh, is Rosaline's chapter. And then the next part of the book is when the children all come home because her mother is selling the house, so they're having one last Christmas together. And it's really about them, like some of them haven't seen each other for years, and, and it's it's a lot about like the changing relationships and how um, they have to kind of reconnect with each other, and about the memories and the history of the house and the emotional difficulties in letting that go and what the house symbolises and it was just a really wonderfully told story and I definitely want to read more by her. And then the other audiobook is Mudlarking by Lara Makeland and this has had quite a lot of hype, it's just come out of paperback as well so it's a good time to support indie bookshops and all that jazz and it is kind of, yeah it's, it's a memoir I would say of her very interesting hobby of mudlarking on the Thames and it's interesting how it's not just about what she finds but it's also about how actually mudlarking helps her through difficult times in her life and each chapter is a section of the river so there's a chapter on London Bridge, there's a chapter on Vauxhall so if you like London, London geography this is a really fascinating way to discover more about the city and its history. There's a section that where lots of Roman pottery can be found. My favourite was probably, I think, at the first chapter, there is a kind of type that isn't used in more like a font, and she finds bits of that, and it's called dub type, and the actual title of the book, I think, is in that type, so it's really cool. And it completely changed my view of it, because I thought it was this kind of thing that poor people did in Victorian times, but no, it's got so, so much interesting stuff, um, and the way it shows, it, like, the differing trades in London, and the things that have washed up from other countries. It was just, just so interesting and yeah, really, really recommend that one. And also the physical books. So I read this in January. This is Cold Comfort Farm by Stella Gibbons. There isn't much to say because it's quite a basic plot, but it's about Flora, whose parents have died, so she leaves and goes to uh, live on a farm, live, live on Cold Comfort Farm in Sussex with her aunt and basically transforms all of their lives and it's, it takes her under her obligation to kind of better everyone and help all these people out who, who are these rough country people and it's just really funny and it's a parody on I think 20th century rural novels no I haven't read them I think you can still enjoy it especially if you read Hardy it's that same kind of vein where it talks about like made up really specific names for tools and um, the cows call things like graceless and pointless and aimless and things like that and it's, it's just really funny and a light read so this is like quite a good time to read it I would say it's quite a nice comfort read I love this cover cracking cover and then a book that I read recently this is Old Baggage by Lissa Evans which is undoubtedly going to be one of my favourite reads of the year it is about is it Matty? well I remember this year Matilda Matty who was a suffragette but it's 1928 now and they've got the vote so it's kind of like what does she do with herself now and it's something I'd never really thought about even though I studied suffragette in that period of history you don't really look at afterwards and um, it's it's interesting how it looks at the idea that even though women have the vote they're not necessarily being educated about politics and that, or they're not necessarily engaged with it and how do you engage it in a generation in the vote that was so important um, to the generation before who fought for it and it, it, it's she's just such a great character like such a strong independent character but also like with a real softness and I just it, it was just so fun and entertaining and I really really recommend this it's just brilliantly written the characters are amazing 
So yes, also she's great on Twitter because she has a doll called Watson and I love her very much. So there's that and then onto a more serious book. This is The Bell Jar by Sylvia Plath. I don't feel like I need to really talk about it as much because it's so well known but it is undoubtedly one of my favourite books of all time now. The way it talks about mental illness. I have never felt so understood by a book and the analogy of mental illness being like being stuck under a bell jar, not being able to breathe fresh air is just so powerful and it's about a girl, oh I can't remember anyone's name, Esther, who is kind of a, an academic prodigy and she's not well off but she's won the scholarship and she's got off in New York for a summer but it's, it's kind of about the emptiness of that and how she doesn't enjoy the parties and the glitz and the glamour and, and about how, really uh, about how she has a breakdown and the the struggle to get through that and it, it's a wonderful book and there is hope and I'd like to say I don't want anyone to like go into this thing really bleak but it, it was just so overwhelmingly <laughs> eloquent and brilliant and I I really think I'm going to try her poetry again now because this was beautifully written it, it had like poetic touches but without being pretentious and I think it was very readable because I don't really get her poetry but maybe like this has sort of redeemed it a bit so yes I'm so glad I finally read this. I got this, I'm pretty sure, for my 17th birthday, and I'm nearly 26, so <laughs> I'm, you know. I, I'm, in a way, though, this is one of the books that I'm glad I read when I did, and this is what I needed when I read it. So, you know, sometimes it's okay to wait to read a book. And then one that I've already talked about in my Comfort Reads video, this is At the Pond, swimming at the Hampstead Ladies Pond, which is 12 different women writers talking about the Hampstead Ladies Pond um, in each season starting in winter and um, it was just really interesting how they took each writer just took their individual brief of writing about the pond in a season and how some applied it very literally and just focus on that some take it to talk about their lives in other ways outside of the ladies pond and it was just really really wonderful and calming and made me wish that I could go and swim there so there's you know if you're, if you're again if you're interested in London this is this is a really lovely like little hidden gem of a book I think and and just a really interesting thing to learn about like the history of it and um, the sort of camaraderie like spirit and community of women um, that's been there. Then a book that is very hard hitting but an important read. This is The Nickel Boys by Colson Whitehead. This had so much hype last year and I know I'm behind on that. Everyone was giving it five stars and I, I jumped on that hype train. I also gave it five stars. This is about two boys, Elwood and Turner, who are incarcerated into the Nickel Academy, which is a kind of young offenders institute for boys, but it's segregated. This is set in 1980s America. And it's horrific because of the racism. And if you don't deal well with like violence and corporal punishment, I wouldn't read this book. There are some very hard to read scenes in here of punishment. Um, but it, it's, it's just such a searing account of the prejudice that they suffer and um, how the American legal system is so against black men and um, it has a really wonderful twist as well yeah, that I did not expect at all. Just really powerful writing again and a book that I liked even more than The Underground Railroad and I, I read that last year and I thought that was great and that's set during um, the slavery era um, but this was just even better. So. If you, I would say if you like Toni Morrison then you would like this. I don't know if that's a fair comparison but I, that's what I'm going to say anyway. Then, no memoir. I read lots of memoirs this year. I'm, I'm really enjoying them. This is All the Lives We Ever Lived, Seeking Solace in Virginia Wool by Catherine Smith. And I picked this up because I saw the spine in a bookshop and thought, well, what's that? And I really got an idea. This is about um, Catherine Smith and her relationship with her father who was an alcoholic but how she found solace in reading To the Lighthouse by Virginia Woolf. And I haven't read that one yet, but it made me really want to read it. And it, it made me, I feel like I'll have a newfound appreciation for it going into reading it whenever I do because of this book. And again, it, it's just, it's wonderful because her relationship with her father is so complex and um, at times determined about, about how she loves and admires him so much, but is so destroyed by him, watching him destroy himself. And, um, the kind of healing power of literature and how books and words and language really help to make you feel like 
understood and just a sense of I don't know, just solid solidarity, I suppose. I was in peace. Like there's there's events in To the Lighthouse that she likens to her own life. I've been feeling into the emotions of characters and the the journey of change in that book that she likens to her own life, and it's just really incredible how she's taken the book and it it has inspired her so much. And I I think a lot of people do have like some kind of book, even if you don't recognise it in your own life so much that you do find solace in it. And I and I just I just loved it. I think she's. I think she's mainly a journalist, but her write her prose is just second to none. Oh, this is making really happy talking about this book. And then last but very much not least, this is Glass Town by Isabel Greenberg, which is her new graphic novel about the Brontes and their made-up fantasy world. And it's just, it's just beautiful. And I always love her colour palettes. It's just. Oh, it it's so clever because it focuses on Charlotte and sort of starts at the end when her siblings are dead. That's not a spoiler. We all know. Come on. If you don't know the Bronte, he's had a rough life. Earth history is a family then. Who are you? Um, and it goes back and looks like from the childhood when they create these worlds and then in how they, when they grow up, how that, that changes and their relationships to their made up world, world um, affect their um, familiar relationship as siblings like how Anne and Emily had gone down, that was their world that was separate to Charlotte and um, not Heathcliff. <laughs> Bramwell even, it's just a really imaginative way, I mean obviously this is you know fictionalised but how she's used the records and the excerpts that exist and um, made that into something visual for us all to enjoy just a delight. So there we go. I, I've had, like so far, I would say a pretty good reading year and April's been a good month so I will try and be better and actually do like a monthly wrap up from now on. But that's been nice just to talk about the good stuff. And I hope that you've been reading some wonderful things too. Let me know. I'd love to hear. Or are you interested? Slash have you read any of these books? And I will say goodbye from me and Snoopy. I will see you soon. Wobbuka shenanigans. Bye.